Al Marciano with Randy Gordon back at ringside at the Sands Hotel here in Atlantic City. Middleweights Tony Suero and Jack Torrance are on deck. We have seen uh, Tony Suero on ESPN several times and recently too. He's a very popular fighter in these parts. Let's get the introductions from Ed Darien. Ladies and gentlemen, this next bout is scheduled for 10 rounds and it's in the middleweight division. The judges, Harold Letterman and William Castro. The timekeeper of the bell is Roy Johnson, counting for the knockdown seconds, alternate referee Joe Cortez. In the ring at this time, the man in charge of the scheduled 10 round middleweight bout, referee Larry Hazard. And now boxing fans introducing the principals. First in the red corner, wearing the blue trunks with the white trim, he is weighing in at 156 and one quarter pounds. This young man hails from the windy city of Chicago, Illinois. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Jake Torrance. Torrance. And his opponent in the blue corner, wearing the red trunks with the white trim. He is tipping the scales at 158 and three quarter pounds. This young man is a native of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, but fighting out of Vineland, New Jersey. Boxing fans here is tough, Tony Suero. Suero. Okay, fellas, you, you fellas are boxing under the rules of the New Jersey State Athletic Commission. They are as follows. Punches should be kept up at all times. Watch the head. Kidney blows. Punching with the open glove and the use of the thumb. When I tell you guys to break, I want a clean break. However, protect yourself at all times, especially when you're coming out of the clinches. In the case of a knockdown, fighter who scores the knockdown, you go to the farthest neutral corner, remain in that corner until I tell you to come out. Fighter going down, you must take a mandatory eight count with the three knockdown ruling being waived. And the bell cannot save either of you if you go down at the end of a round. Do you have any questions? No, sir. Okay, shake hands now. Come out fighting at the bell. Good luck to you. Tony Swero saying no, sir, to uh, Larry Hazard, the referee. This is scheduled for 10. Swero has been that distance. Uh, Jake Torrance says he's never gone 10 before. Swero coming off a TKO over Danny Long of Boston. That was seen here on ESPN. Torrance last fought in February, won a six-round decision. Sal, as we said earlier, I'm predicting a real action-packed fight here because Suero is not one to take a backward step, and Jake Torrance doesn't take many backward steps either. He likes to come and fight. If it goes the distance, they score it on the round system here in New Jersey. Nice job. And the referee, Larry Hazard, is involved in the scoring. Torrance in the blue, Suero in the red. Now, from what I've seen of Torrance, I think he's a little bit faster of hand than Suero, but he stands five foot seven and a half. Suero 5'11. That could be a difference. Suero's first effective punch was a countering right hand. And right on the chin of Torrance. Well, it was that countering right hand that put Danny Long to sleep in the fifth round just two weeks ago. So let's see if he uses that counter right hand again. Tony Suero turned professional in 1979 after winning all four of his amateur fights. They figured, why go on in the amateurs? Why not do it for money? That was his feeling about it. He made the right choice. Those are power jabs that Tony Suero's throwing. Notice his feet are flat on the canvas. He is not up on his toes. He's planted. He's got his feet planted for maximum power. We're halfway through the opening round, and there is some redness underneath the left eye of Tony Suero. So Torrance has tattooed him already. Overhand right on the shoulder. Suero missed with it. As an amateur, Torrance claimed, he told me, he said he had 200 fights, winning 170 of them. Sounds kind of like a tall tale to me. But from what I understand, he did have quite an amateur career, so just maybe he was 170 and 30. 
With that kind of record, there probably was a line outside his door from the fight manager. Well, if he was throwing it, he continued to throw it quite well because he told me that in the 1980 National Golden Gloves, he lost in the finals to Donald Curry, who's currently unbeaten as a pro, but on the way in the quarterfinals, he beat Bobby Joe Young, and in the semifinals, he beat Milton McCrory. So, I don't know. It sounds like a tall tale to me. Moments ago, did you see that right to the body by Suero? Then he followed up with the left hook to the head. Suero with a lead right hand. Suero with a tough jab. Torrance now backing up. Nice move, catch a punch. Suero making nice uh, tremendous progress. He is a Ooh. much more effective boxer than he was a year ago. We'll be right back with round two. Nice jab. Turn left. I gotta be out of here. Take me out Round of two in Atlantic City, middleweights. Tony Suero in the red and Jake Torrance in the blue. And between rounds, animated conversation from Carmen Graziano, the manager and trainer of Tony Suero. Oh, it's so much fun going into the corner when Graziano was working. He was telling Tony Suero that he should stop looking for the counter right hand to the head, that he should start fainting with to the head and drive it to the body. But as he was telling Suero that, Suero said, hey, did I win the round? Suero is shaken up. Jake Torrance with a couple of right hands here in round two. And he is not doing what Graziano told him to do to work the body, but he certainly is effective. Well, what happened, as he was shaken up, Torrance with a right hand, he got clipped with a left hand right on the eye, and it could have been a thumb that stuck in his eye, and he was blinking for a second there. So he got quite ticked off and decided sometimes when a guy gets mad, he forgets everything. He just comes out throwing bombs. Well, that's a perfect example of Tony Swirl because we have seen it before. He actually fights better when he's tagged. A lot of fighters do fight like that. When you, you hit them a good clean shot, you wake them up. Now you see Suero remembering what Graziano said just a few moments ago. He whacked Torres with a hard right to the body. But there he is, headhunting again. I gave the first round to Tony Suero on the fact that he landed, I thought, more punches, and he landed the harder punch. Good right hand by Torres, a lead right, and that shook up Suero. Suero digging the right to the body, left to the body, remembering what Graziano told him to do. Now, Randy, do you think that Torres would be slugging with Suero? Not at all. First of all, he's about three and a half inches short. So what he should be doing is flirting in and out, just skirting all around the place, side to side, up and down, in and out. He can't stand right in front of Suero. Torrance told me that his best punch is a solid left jab. I want to see it. Right-left combination by Suero on the head of Jake Torrance. Once again, uh, an easy bout for the referee, Larry Hazard, with uh, very few, if any, clinches for these two middleweights. Grab hit that back right here. That's it. Put the cup. Put the cup. Suero following uh, Torrance around now, not cutting off the ring. Torrance said he took this fight on one week notice, and this is before the fight he told me this, and he said, not that I'm making an excuse, but what I'm going to go and do is stand out there and use the, all my experience in the amateurs, 200 fights, and just conserve energy. And I told him, you're in against a guy who's not going to conserve energy. So well, then we're just going to have to mix it up. Tony Suero, with uh, seven knockouts in his 11 wins, is progressing as a professional, hitting much harder. And that takes care of the second round. Let's go to the corner of Tony Suero. Good box. Now, you see that? You did half of it. You see, he's picking his hand up. He's open there. When he's picking his hand up for deep breaths here, yeah. When he puts his hands up, watch Tony. Tony, you gotta hit the hand. I put my hand up there by open stuff. Right there and back with a left hook up Okay? Let it go all the way around. Turn your head and your body and get leverage for the left hook and you come back. Okay? Off the eyes. You're doing a good job. You're boxing nice. You got good professional boys out there. And stay with it. Don't get hit, Tony. Hit the don't get hit. This is the name of the when game. Let's take a look at some action from that second round. That's Torrance in the blue, Suero in the red measuring him. The lead right hand picked off by Torrance. Seconds out. But Suero with an effective jab, keeping him out of his range. What did Carmen say? Professional poise? 
always an experience going into the corner with Carmen Graziano. He knows what he's talking about. Carmen Graziano, veteran trainer and manager. Always clear cut with his instructions. In the now Torrance comes out, looks like he wants to be busier. And as he was telling Tony Swirl what a great job he was doing with the right hand to the body, Tony was looking away towards the split bucket. And Graziano's going, Tony, Tony, over here, Tony. Left-right combination by Suero to the head of Torrance. Torrance can't wait for Suero. He better get off first. Torrance continues to wait on Suero, and that's a lethal game. Anybody who waits is going to pay the price. And right now, both guys are posing, but Torrance is doing more of the posing. As I see this fight after two rounds, Tony Suero has won both of the rounds. And I think Torrance is going to have to start picking up the pace. I mean, coming forward and throwing punches. He cannot win this fight backing up. Step, Tony, run aside, run aside. Run aside, come, come on. Come up, come up. After two very busy rounds, here in round three, both of these fighters are waiting for a bus. Well, I think what Tony is trying to do, he's trying to do to Torrance right now what he did to Danny Long in the fifth round. Set him up with the left hand and open him up for a left hook or especially a right hand. Halfway through the round, a swirl through a double left hook. The first one was blocked by the arm of Torrance. The second one was right on the head of Torrance. That was a punch that could hurt a lot of fighters. When you go to throw a left uppercut to the body from way outside, you usually land on the guy's elbow, and you could break your fingers doing that, especially your thumb. As we enter the final minute of the round, Swero beating the head of Jake Torrance. Lead right hand by Swero. Swero listens to Carmen Graziano, who's yelling from the corner, over the top, over the top. And just as he said that, Swero launched the over the top right hand. There's that left to the body again by Swero. Jake Torrance is not fighting smartly here. He is letting Swero get off first. Overhand right by Swero and another one. We'll have round four for you after this timeout on ESPN. Ace Hot. Tony Swero in the red, hammering Jake Torrance in round three. Slow motion action for you. And Torrance allowing Swero to dictate the tempo of this fight. Back live now, round four, scheduled for 10 for these two middleweights. Swero with a record of 11, three and two with seven knockouts. Torrance is eight and one with four knockouts. It was a big year in 1981 for Jake Torrance. He had seven fights, winning six of them. He lost his last fight of the year, December 3rd, to Louis K.O. Mateo by an eight-round decision. Now there's Torrance getting off first with a left hook to the body, left hook to the head. That's what he has to do to be more effective. And what he did for a second, he hurt Suero, and all that did was get his macho up, and he waved at him. He said, come on, let's fight. Now Suero utilizing the jab to keep uh, Jake from those uh, rushes. After three rounds, I've got Suero ahead, three rounds to nothing. And Torrance, I really think, has to do what he's doing right now, keeping that pressure on. He's, he's moving in too slow. He's got to really pick up the pace. Some good jabs from Torrance, but he takes a countering right hand right in his face from Suero. Big right hand by Suero. Suero's looking for that one-punch knockout. He's leaning into that right hand. We're halfway through round four. We've seen more jabs from both of these fighters in this round than the all previous three rounds. That's true, and it's a very heavy jab that Tony Suero is throwing. 
and I think that Jake has to just keep throwing that left hand if he's going to do anything this fight. We're in the final minute of the round. Asparo digs the left hand to the midsection of Torres, then a right to the head. Asparo missed it. by Torres, but Asparo came back with a left hook. That shook up Torres, whose knees buckled. His knees didn't miss the boat jangles on that one. Very nice move by Suero because he was clipped by Torrance, but he had presence of mind to come back with his own countering shot. Final seconds, round four. So Torrance uh, came out here in round four with new vim and vigor. Showed Suero a lot more of his jab, but once again, tough Tony out of Philadelphia, slugging pretty good. Taking some action in round four. Suero missing with the right hand. Torrance trying to take advantage, but Suero came back with a crunching left hook. Back live. Round five. Let's go to the uh, recording now of the conversation in Tony Suero's corner between rounds. Get hit. Play corner with an overhand right hand. Your corner with his guard down. Only because you hit it with two shots right here. Yeah, you staggered with one. But see, you started with two punches in here. Again, let's go. Two punches in here, and then roundhouse over the top of the left hook. You've caught second wind. It's going to be an easy night from here into it. Go see it. Carmen Graziano exuding a lot of confidence uh, for Tony Swirl. Randy, as I look around the sands tonight, all eyes are glued on these two fighters. No one is distracted. No one is having a conversation. At least way, that's what I can see. This is a very entertaining fight. It certainly is. And while I have Tony Swirl well ahead, Torrance is in this fight. He's going to start doing a little bit more work, but every time he starts stepping up the pace, Tony stays right with him. Graziano's only complaint with Tony is that he is being hit by Torrance, and he's taking, you know, not a lot of hard shots, but I think Carmen's worried about that. And that has been a criticism of Swirl for a while. Well, it's something to be worried about. If, if your guy doesn't have much of a defense, when he gets in against a banger, he's going to be in trouble. Torrance is not much of a banger, and it's a, he's a good man to learn against. Halfway through the round, Tony Swirl continues to hit Torrance heavily. I will tell you this, Tony Swirl appears to be a very good listener in that corner. Carmen tells him something, he says, keep digging those shots and come upstairs with the right hand. Sure enough, he listens. He digs one or two right hands and then throws an overhand right. He is listening well. Philadelphia is Tony Swero, 23 years old. Chicago's Jake Torrance is 22. We're in the final minute of round five. Neither fighter's been down or cut. Torrance trying to get something going here, and Swero had a kind of lethargical reaction to that flurry. He must feel that Torrance can't hurt him. Tony Suero in the red doing it all here against Jake Torrance as we come down to the end of round five. We're halfway through the scheduled ten rounder. Keep it where it is. For five rounds, Tony Swero in the red has been very effective against Jake Torrance. Hasn't cut him, hasn't put him down, but he has uh, hit him with every possible punch you can uh, level your guy with. But, but Jake has been very tough. Now, between rounds, we recorded a conversation, actually a one-way conversation, Carmen Graziano to Tony Swero, and let's listen to it. You can't handle it like that. And stay here, Tony, but follow that punch with a hook. There's no use going for his head and gloves are no use hitting gloves or hurting your hand or hitting his elbow. Underneath and hook back. Hard hook, Tom. Huh? And once in a while, fall to the hook, fall, leave with a hook. Just fall in and wait, uppercut hook. Yeah, then with the right hand. All right, so go to the hook side. Faint the right hand, take another half step. Down. You saw Jake Torrance explode with a flurry. It's about time. Carmen Graziano still wants his guy, Tony Swerve, to hit the body. 
Now the question is, can Jake Torrance do it again and again? Well, he can't fight square of the way he fought the first five rounds. And expect to win. He's blocking every one of Suero's jabs with his face. He's walking straight in and getting nailed every time Tony throws that hard jab again. Suero now more of a boxer than he was earlier in the fight. He has proven he can slug with Torrance. Taking away with the jab. Look at those jabs snaking through Torrance's defense. Torrance has to bob and weave more. And if he's going to do anything, he's got to get on the inside and start working Suero's body. Randy, those jabs probably offset that brief flurry by Torrance, and that takes care of the first half of the round. Now here in the second half of the round, it's up to Red. Well, you know, I don't really believe a lot of guys score it like that. I just take the fight as it goes. Referee off from McCanny for one. He scores it and breaks it into thirds. One minute, one minute, and one minute. What if the guy wins the first minute, wins the second minute, and wins the first 30 seconds? But all of a sudden, the other fighter comes back and has a big 30 seconds or 25 seconds. Who do you give the round to? I think the guy that just does the most work, the brain is computer let your brain do the work don't break it into any kind of into minute sections or anything just watch the round and pay attention obviously it's a subjective uh, analysis when you judge a fight we're coming down to the end of round six swear of boxing in this round there's a good countering right hand by swear of over the lazy left of jake torres that was a good example of a counterpunch. He waited for Torrance to throw that jab. He knew it was coming. As soon as it landed, he said, I'll swap a jab for a right cross any day. And he did so and landed it beautifully. Coming up, round seven, as Suero stuck his tongue at Jake Torrance. Why do of live top rank boxing, Boston's Freddie Roach headlines the card when he takes on Nicaragua's knockout specialist, Renato Morata. Join all the action from Las Vegas as ESPN continues to bring you the best in boxing action. In slow motion, Tony Suero taking rapid fire from Jake Torrance, and that really was the uh, offensive output by Jake in that previous round. Suero came back pretty good. Now we're back live. Round seven scheduled for 10. That, that really was it. Jake Torrance did it once. Why can't he do it again? He's just been throwing singular punches tonight, except for that floor. Calorie right hand again by Suero. Catching Torrance on the left side of his face. This is the sharpest boxing I've seen Suero really put in. Well, Carmen Graziano claims that the reason Tony Suero is becoming a better fighter is he's really learned to use that jab, and he's counterpunching a lot better. Let's take a look at my scoring as I have it after six rounds. There it is. It's Suero well ahead. Torrance has taken a lot, but he's not cut, hasn't gone down. Of course, my scoring, I must remind you, unofficial. Did I see a right hand from Torrance? Did my eyes deceive me? Good, sharp overhand right over Suero's left hand. Now, let's see. If he landed the thing, he might start thinking to himself, wow, I did it once. Let me see if I could do it again. And if you notice, Sal, every time Suero throws that left hand, he's bringing it down around his waist. I think Torrance can drop another right hand on him. Halfway through, round seven. As long as uh, Torrance eats those jabs, he's not going to mount an offense. I want to remind you, coming up, welterweights Mark Harris and Robert Sawyer, scheduled for 10. That's next. Less than a minute to go in round seven. that Torrance rolled with that right hand or he'd be on the deck now. Torrance seems to be puzzled by Suero. 
Tony having his way. Tony's taking a bit of a vacation this round, but it's still enough, I think, to carry the round. Coming up, round eight. Middleweights Tony Suero and Jake Torrance into round eight, scheduled for ten. That's Suero in the red, Torrance in the blue. Suero with uh, two wins in 1982, a TKO over Cyclone Hart in four rounds, and the TKO over Danny Long in the fifth. Here's his uh, trainer and manager, Carmen Graziano, before this round. That's it. So we're going to have to hit him clean. In order to hit him clean, Tony, he's got nice defense. You got to you got to set him up. You got to make him look one place. Deceptive move. Faint, faint. You see his hands go up. You go down. He's got a good defense. He's well schooled. He's got the basic fundamentals so well that it's going to be hard to break through upstairs. But you can hit, go down here. He does good things. Carmen Graziano telling uh, Tony Suero that his opponent is well schooled. It would be difficult to break through the defense, but for the better part of seven rounds, Suero hasn't had a problem. Carmen is a real school teacher in that corner. He's trying to keep the pressure on Tony. I think Carmen knows that he's way ahead, but he wants to give him more incentive. I don't think you should ever tell a fighter this fight is in the bag for you, because if you do, sometimes that's when the guy starts easing up and he can get in trouble from that. Torrance tried to uh, counter the left hand of Suero, and Suero just ducked Wait. back in time. You know, I really think that Carmen Graziano should take most of the responsibility for the development, the early development of former light heavyweight champion Mike Rossman. It was Carmen who really made him into a boxer, and it was when Carmen Graziano left Mike that Mike, well, then he won the title, but quickly fell apart after that. So I think Carmen had a lot to do with his early development of Mike Rossman. And Carmen here has taken a Philadelphia street brawler by the name of Tony Suero. Matter of fact, uh, taken him under his wing, had him move into his house, and has been very strict with him, tough discipline, been drilling him in the gym. And there's no question, in the last year, Suero has become a better boxer. No question about it. This is a kid who about a year ago said doesn't like to train, he has no discipline whatsoever, you better forget about being a fighter. And the eight went over with Carmen Graziano, and I tell you, Graziano has done some job with him, has really given him discipline. Guerrero had a so-so year in 1981. Two wins by knockouts, a loss of 10 to uh, Muhammad Shabazz, and then a, a draw at eight against Doug DeWitt. But he's come on with two straight wins in 82. Well, part of Tony's problem, again, right there was the discipline. He just couldn't get him to stay in the gym. Or you couldn't even get him to the gym. He wants Doug DeWitt in a rematch in the worst way. He said, I'll take it any time. Round eight. Now his, we'll be right back. Jake Torrance comes out for round nine against Tony Suero. Neither fighter has been cut or down. It's been mostly Suero. Late right hand by Suero finds the mark. We have been talking about Carmen Graziano for most of this fight, the trainer and manager, Tony Suero. And we're going to show you, Carmen, as he yells instructions to Suero throughout the fight. Interesting, a lot of people here, but you can always hear Carmen's voice. Suero continues to bank Torrent. Sal, I've been in arenas when there have been thousands of people yelling and screaming and you've always heard Carmen Graziano. There he is in the box on your screen. He's in there fighting as much as Suero is. Move the head, move the head, you hear him. Meanwhile, Torres's opponent is not Carmen Graziano, it's Tony Suero, but uh, it, it looks like uh, Graziano has worked on Suero so much that he is almost like a puppeteer. Suero following his instructions. There's my scoring as I have it after eight rounds of course unofficial. Suero, 7-1 over Torrance, who I believe has to knock out Suero, and that is some task in front of him. 
Jake Torrance of Chicago, only one defeat in nine fights. He came in tonight with a record of eight and one with four knockouts. But he has been uh, really lackluster against Squero Slamming. One of the losses on Tony Suero's record came on March 28, 1981 in Syracuse. Suero was fighting on the undercard, Sugar Ray Leonard, of Larry Bond's title fight. Suero fought then contender Davey Moore, who's now the WBA junior middleweight champion. And Suero was stopped in the fourth round. We're in the final minute of round nine. You saw a few moments ago, uh, Torrance wrapped Suero pretty good, but he wasn't hurt. A slip there by Suero and a piece of ice. Right, there was a couple of pieces of ice right in Torrance's corner, and Swearer almost went down. Larry Howard has it telling them to clean that up. Some sharp left hooks there by Tony Swearer. Swearer living dangerously with that low left. Well, a lot of fighters will do that on purpose. Thomas Hearns does it on purpose, trying to draw shots at his chin. Coming up, the 10th and final round. <laughs> the final three minutes for middleweights, Tony Suero in the red, Jake Torrance in the blue. For most of the 10 rounds, Suero has been dominating. He hasn't been able to put Torrance down, he hasn't cut him, but he has been beating him to the punch. Recording of uh, Suero's trainer and manager, Carmen Graziano, between rounds. Okay, that's when a guy becomes vulnerable. He'll be open. He's trying to knock you out. He's going to be easier to hit. Uh, move your head. Take it right up there. Move your head. Side Take to side. Look, Tony. This kind of stuff. Three minutes now, okay? Three minutes. You heard Carmen Graziano. Despite the fact that Tony Suero has been sharp against Jake Torrey, as just what occurred, he is wide open. Suero, I think, could be tied, perhaps, by a faster, harder-hitting fight. I think you're absolutely right, Joe. As I have the fight here in the 10th round, I've got Tony Suero well ahead. And I think the only way that Torrance can win this fight is by knocking him out. And Carmen Graziano brought out a point. He knows that Suero's ahead, and he also felt that Torrance is going to come out trying to knock his man out. And he told him that. And he said, if he tries to knock you out, it's going to leave him open, and he's going to be easy to knock out. I bring the subject up because Suero in the previous round of the night was wrapped pretty well. We're halfway through this last round. Oh, I think you're really right in, in your observation there. I think that Suero can be timed. As a matter of fact, we've been talking about his counter right hand. Torrance hasn't done it tonight, but I think the left hand of Tony Suero can be timed. Torrance gets hit with a left hook, keeps coming forward. And that's my only criticism, really, of Suero. Otherwise, he has no signs of fatigue. He's been punching effectively with both hands, but it seems like he is open on his left side. Tonight, Tony Suero weighs 158 and three quarter pounds. He said he feels strong at this weight, although he'd rather fight at the 154 pound limit. That's the junior middleweight level. He said he doesn't think the competition up in the top 10 is that tough as it is in the middleweight level. Torrance now trying to pull the rabbit out of the hat in the final seconds against Suero. Not tough, Sal. Luke Benitez up at the top, Sugar Ray Leonard up there, Tommy Hearns has fought it that weight. That's not tough. Tony Ayala. Oh, this is tough Tony. Suero. <laughs> tough Tony Suero. But nonetheless, he has uh, looked very well against Jake Torrance tonight. And uh, as far as we're concerned, Jake's got to take him out here in the final seconds to win. So they go the full 10 and will return with the official decision after this timeout. Back at the Sands in Atlantic City, Sal Marciano with Randy Gordon. Here's Ed Darian with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision and a scoring as follows. 
Judge William Kostrop scores it 9-1. Judge Harold Letterman scores it 8-2. And referee Larry Hazard scores it 7-2-1. And the winner, tough Tony Swero. Swero. A unanimous decision for Tony Swero. Slight difference in the cards, but overwhelming nonetheless. 9 1, 8 2, and 7 2 1. We'll be right back to talk to Tony Swero. Just seen uh, Tony Swero hammer out a unanimous decision over Jake Torrance. Tony, we made the observation that this is the best boxing we have seen from you in your career. Well, if you think that, I'm glad. But I could do much better. We also said that you seem to be wide open on your left side. You were hammered a couple of times. Well, I have to know I'm in the fight, at least. <laughs> Tony's the kind of guy that must be stimulated, otherwise you don't lose problems. I don't get hit like last fight. I almost fell asleep. I got a. I got a you know, He's I gotta have some pressure. Right. It's gotta be more eventful for him. He can't stay in there. The harder the fight, the better I fight. He if he would have had a little, if he would have came at me harder, I would have fought better. I, I was working off off of what he did. You know, off his moves, I was trying to count him. Just use my jab to get the points and try to take him out with the big shot. You were very effective with your countering right. I. You notice he was a smart fighter because every time I I threw that jab, he threw that jab. I slipped it out, outside. I came with the right, and he does, you know, turn his head. Beautiful. If he would have counted with a hook, he would have came. He would have would have been a good shot on his part because I, I wouldn't have seen it coming, and uh, that could do a lot of damage. Notice That's a little bit of hot dog in there. Sometimes you'd stick your tongue out. Well, you couldn't see from your side, but uh, he thought. was giving me a little, little motion too. So I. I counter punch that too. For the entire fight, we listened to Carmen Graziano between rounds. Now we get a chance after the fight. Tonight it was the Carmen Graziano show. Well, Sal, I think your observation that it was the best that he ever boxed. There's no question about that. The strength is there. The ability is there. He's a good athlete. It's a matter of discipline from here in now. And the fact that he was aware that he was uh, vulnerable for a left hook means that he's thinking, and that's very important. Last he's starting to... You said I was looking out the window. Excuse me? Last fight, you said during the introduction with the, with, the, with, the, with the ref, I was in a classroom looking out the window. That was a good observation on your part because in that fight, I was like... Daydreaming, like he said. It was boring. You got to keep your attention to keep you sharp. Yes, this fight I was more. Uh, I still wasn't as good as I could be. I've only been in the gym the last three months, you know. Besides that, I missed three. Come in one. Come in three. I mean one. Go back out three, you know. But I've been staying in the gym pretty. I've been fighting pretty steady. That's three in a row. I wanted the knockout, but I was on a knockout streak two in a row. <laughs> Bring on Doug DeWitt, right? That's right. Bring him on. <laughs> I'll be in tip-top shape for that fight, and if I don't stop him, they can give him the fight. Tony Swero goes the full 10, sharp enough to look like he'd go 15, perhaps 20. We'll have more boxing for you from Atlantic City after this pause.